Freezing waters haven't put them off from making the journey, with the RNLI and other rescue boats constantly on the lookout. And today, a stark reminder of just how dangerous the Channel Crossing is, with four people dead as they try to reach the UK in a flimsy dinghy. In some cases, it's posts like this one on TikTok motivating them to take the risk. Designed to appeal to those desperate to get to Britain. One voice we won't hear from today is of a person on that boat. But we've managed to speak to a man who made the exact same journey two years ago. Khalil fled Syria and says he paid two and a half thousand pounds to a people smuggler in France to facilitate the trip. Like some of those today, he was eventually rescued by the Coast Guard. Yeah, we were all scared and was like really scared and terrified because like, you know, you are in the middle of the sea, you're middle in the channel, you don't see anything. And it doesn't matter how much you are like good in swimming, like you cannot make it to Dover when like there is 10 miles ahead and in that cold weather like how long you're gonna survive in the water and khalil what about the people smugglers i mean you know i've heard so much from other people about how dangerous they can be yeah they are dangerous some of them they are even like having arm like guns and weapons on them knives different types some of them like force people to take this boat you like now you pay me or i'm gonna shut i'm gonna kill you Nearly 45,000 people have crossed the channel this year. According to the International Organization for Migration's Missing Migrants Project, 205 people have died in the waters since 2014. That's not including the four who lost their lives today. Home Secretary. Earlier, the Home Secretary conveyed her sadness at what happened and called the crossing lethal, saying it was unlawful and will not lead to a better life. That there are, there are millions, millions of people around the world who are fleeing conflict and poverty and who seek a better life elsewhere. Our capacity in this country is not uh, uh, infinite. We cannot accept everybody who wishes to come to this country. That is a reality. But for people like Khalil, the danger is no deterrent. In my case, like we, me and my friend, or like the people that I met in the journey who was like, you know, guys, we have nowhere to go. So either we go back home to die or we try tonight. If we make it to the other side, we hope that we'll have better life. The government said today that it will establish safe routes. One argument is that they simply don't exist, leading to more people making that dangerous journey across the channel. The International Rescue Committee, along with some MPs, is urging the government to create those routes as soon as possible, giving asylum seekers a safer option as to how they get here. A former Border Force official says the channel crossing is appealing because there are no checks. So traditionally the border control operates, as you would know if you travel, you have to show your passport to get on a plane and, and, and they will check to make sure that you, you've got a genuine passport. If you need a visa, they'll check to see if you've got a visa. You don't need to do any of those things if you climb into a small dinghy on a beach in France, you see. That's why this route is being used. It's a way round our traditional border controls that we've set up. So it is a new problem. Another tragic reminder. For desperate people, risk is overridden by reward of a life in the UK. It's that desperation that has again cost lives.